Joe Madison is on the line with us, host of the Joe Madison Show on Sirius XM, 6 to 10 a.m. Eastern Time, every single day, weekday of the week, on Channel 128. He's, uh, his website is joemadison.com. Hey, Joe, welcome back. Hey, thank you, Mr. Ardman. How are you? And Louise and everybody. <laughs> Mr. Ar- uh, we're fine. <laughs> we're <laughs> fine. I hope you and Sherry are well. Yeah, I will. It's, I will. It, is, it, has been, it has been too long since I've seen you. Well, we're busy. I mean, these are just crazy times. You they know, are. People like us, uh, have, uh, we should be busy. Good yeah. gracious. So, yeah. um, yeah, but we'll get we'll hook up after things slow down. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully. Yeah. Um, I, I'm. Uh, I understand you had a conversation with the president of the United States yesterday. Yes, we did. Uh, we covered uh, three areas. Uh, I actually started out asking my audience if he had a chance to uh, talk with the president, what questions would you ask him? And we, we just got an array of uh, questions, but it ended up boil- being boiled down to three areas. One was the um, oral arguments before the United States Supreme Court regarding the Voting Rights Act, and particularly this is uh, Shelby, I think it's Shelby County versus a holder, mm-hmm. uh, regarding Section 5 right. of the uh, Voting Rights Act. That deals with preclearance, uh, where certain states, uh, the, the, particularly those states that were in um, heavy violation of people's voting rights, have to have to have any changes like gerrymandering, like changing any election laws pre-cleared by the Justice Department before they can be implemented. And that's being challenged, at least in uh, court now, by uh, on uh, at least with oral arguments. And we asked him what would be the consequences of that if 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 uh, the Voting Rights Act Section Five is uh, overturned. Mm-hmm. And uh, then we talked about the, of course, uh, sequestering and the impact it would have. And I was more concerned about the impact it would have on the poor and working community, particularly, you know, African Americans and Hispanics. Mm-hmm. And then the third was uh, the importance to future generations of the fact that Rosa Parks' uh, statue uh, will, will be uh, erected in Statuary Hall, uh, actually the 27th. It's going to be a busy day on the 27th. Mm-hmm. And she becomes the first African American uh, woman to have her to have a, such an honor, and uh, he, he he spoke very candidly about all three issues. Saying what? Well, in terms of uh, voting rights act, uh, uh, he, he quite honestly he did not seem uh, uh, very uh, confident uh, that uh, Section Five of the Voting Rights Act would be upheld. I, I must be honest with you, and oh. I know that I have talked to some civil rights leaders, those that have organizations who met with the president immediately after my interview with him, said they got the same feeling. But he basically argued that even if uh, Section 5 is overturned, you still don't lose the major, uh, your voting rights. You still don't lose that. Matter of fact, you can still challenge. But the problem, of course, as he explained, would be you would have to challenge after the election. Uh, well, that can be problematic because but let's say, for example, um, like in Florida, where they got rid of, uh, uh, what was it, Sunday voting, early voting, uh, and there were some other states. Well, you know, the election's over. You either lose or whatever happens, and now you go to court and challenge it. Well, that could take years for uh, to work its way through court the damage could already be done, particularly in a local election. Let's say for sheriff or for mayor or for whatever, some Mm -hmm. local election. And, um, but he, you know, he, I must tell you, I got the impression that he wasn't that confident that they would have the votes in the Supreme Court. And he sort of took the position that, you know, be prepared. Now, that may be... 
his Maybe attitude it's... of being cautious, you yeah. know, because nobody knows what the hell the Supreme Court's going to do. Yeah, maybe it's plan for the worst and hope for the best. But well, Joe, well, that that that, and I think that's kind of uh, where he came from. Yeah. In terms of uh, the sequestering, you know, he's you know he, we we talk, you know he said well the, it, he said all the things that we've heard from people. Uh, that, you know, this is going to be very difficult. People are going to be furloughed. It's going to have a rippling effect because, you know, folks who get furloughed, folks who lose their jobs, they spend money. It's going to have an impact on the economy. He also made the point about, and something I haven't heard people talk about, that it's not just about government bureaucrats or government employees or the military, it happens to also be about the, the money that government spends in buying things. Mm-hmm. The government buys a lot of items, and and usually it buys it from, uh, you know, uh, not only military contractors, but small businesses, you know, mm-hmm. suppliers. Yeah. Uh, I made the point uh, after the interview to some news outlets that, no, they buy everything from toilet paper to ceram rat. Mm-hmm. I mean, they buy a lot of things, and they have a program in which small businesses can, uh, you know, contract to, to have their items bought. Well, that's going to dry up, and yeah. and and then uh, someone said, and this is also interesting. Now, this is not what he said, but someone brought out the fact that the Republicans may play a, a, a trick and that is that uh, they'll they'll wring their hands over military budget cuts and mm-hmm. how dangerous this is they'll mm-hmm. let it happen sequestration will happen and then turn right around uh, a, a week or so later and introduce a bill that would reinstate the funds that would be cut and force the hand of Democrats to either vote for military spending or vote against it. Right. Plan on and, it. Bet and, on it, Joe. That, that's right. <laughs> and so that's, the, he said, that's what you better watch for. So all this talk about, about, about uh, you know, the military and long lines, and then what they'll do is, is and if you vote against it, if you look soft on defense. Right. Then they go yeah. after you in the next election, or you get then primaried. They go, they, there you go. Now, in terms of Rosa Parks, uh, you know, that's an easy one. Uh, the, you know, she, she, he talked about, and, and, and being a community organizer came up, and he talked about how, how, her, how she was prepared, and most people forget this, how she was prepared to do what she did. Mm. She had worked years with the, Over the uh, NACP. She had yeah. been a community organizer. She had worked with young people. So she understood the consequences of her actions when she sat down on that bus and basically jump-started the modern civil rights movement. And, and then he said, of course, you know, for her to be among the giants... In, in politics uh, in that hall uh, was, uh, in fact, not only a great honor, but for future generations to recognize that here was a woman that was primarily a seamstress mm-hmm. and made just her actions, her commitment to change, uh, to justice, uh, made a, com- a, a, a tremendous contribution. And as I said to him, there would not be a Barack Obama uh, for president or a Joe Madison or any of us who have, who have benefited from the fact that Rosa Parks sat down so all of us could stand up. Well said. Joe Madison, JoeMadison.com. Joe, thanks so much for coming on. Uh, have a great weekend, and thank you, Tom. Thanks, you too.